Jean Decode is a 20-year Navy veteran who served on five classes of submarines. In 1992, he had a near-death experience where he received downloads from the celestial realm about how the Earth is run by the dark forces. After he retired from the Navy, he began to do research on all sorts of topics concerning UFOs, anomalous phenomena, and the elite groups, both human and extraterrestrial, running our planet. He's done extensive research on deep underground military bases, and we're going to be going over a lengthy report he did on dumbs and what's happening today in these dumbs concerning missing children, slave trade, cloning and biological weapons research, and efforts by the White Hats to liberate these dumbs using special forces. You are listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here is Dr. Michael Sala. Well, welcome back, Gene, to Exopolitics Today. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Saul. It's an honor to be back. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's been a, a couple of months since our last interview, and we really only touched the surface of the the research that you've done on deep underground military bases. And, and you shared with me a 100-page document, a, a PDF file. So I thought uh, we could spend some time going through that document, because you just present a lot of data, a lot of facts, a lot of information about the construction and the kind of like what goes into these dams, the, the location, the locations, and of course, what's in, what's happening in them today. So I, I thought we would be able to cover that uh, today, if, if you're willing to do that. I'd love to, thank you. All right, so uh, the the paper is called Dumbs Deep Underground Military Bases, The Underground War, The Full Update, US Bases Part 1, The Introduction. So for people that are tuning in, where would they go to get this paper if they wanted to read it? That one's available both on my website, gdeco.org, on the surface area. It means that um, you know, submarines when you're on the surface, you can be seen freely. So that's a free area. The uh, deep dive sections, when you dive on a submarine, you can't be seen. So that's a, a paid behind a paywall. Uh, this one's available for free. Also, on my, you know, besides on my website, on my Rumble at Real GD Code. Okay, great. So people can find this. This is uh, something that isn't behind the paywall. It's just available on the website. And then uh, if people want to dive deeper, then uh, they have to subscribe, I guess, and and there's a lot of information there uh, on on the different things that you discuss. So I wanted to start with was what you have revealed in terms of the cabal or the deep state being mostly centered in the deep underground military bases, and the real reason for the Ukraine coup and the persecution of uh, Russian speakers in that portion of Ukraine, uh, especially Eastern Ukraine. So you, you discussed this in your, your paper. So why don't you kind of walk us through, you know, what, what was really going on with this uh, with this coup and the Ukrainians and how did the dumbs factor into that? Well, Ukrainian is the area where the uh, Kazarian Mafia, which from my understanding are a non-terrestrial group that came from a, another star system after they blew up their homeworks. So they landed in the Pontic Steppes, uh, primarily in the area of U what we now know today as Ukraine. And in that, they dug in immediately. You know, it's like any uh, invader does. You dig in, you create your battle lines, your battle fronts, your defense systems. And so the tunneling under Ukraine is quite vast. I've done that and shown some of the uh, vast tunnel systems. Hitler was also involved during that time. Uh, of World War II of creating an ex expanse in addition to that. It also goes back to pri prior to all of that type of area where that civilization had massive tunneling and uh, extremely advanced technologies and pyramids, primarily in the area of Crimea and thorium-based cold uh, 
low energy nuclear reactions called fusion as it's called so there's a lot of different groups over the time frame of human species on the earth that have created a vast tunneling system and dumb networks deep underground military base networks connected by those tunnels from ukraine it spirals out into the rest of europe and goes all the way down into asia and over into africa and even underneath the uh, oceans to connect to the other continents so with this extensive series of underground tunnels in the ukraine the deep state used these to build all sorts of uh, bio labs and all sorts of uh, facilities that were designed to help them take over the elected government and eventually wage war on russia and you talk about the maidan coup in in 2014 and you uh, essentially are making the case that uh, this was an effort that was being sponsored by the deep state and that the russians uh, eventually had to intervene and of course in 2022 they launched their uh, special military operations so so you know what was it what was really going on below the surface as opposed to what we saw on the surface in terms of the fighting between the the russians and the ukrainians yes yeah, so below you know on the surface you had five i believe bio labs that the russians have liberated that were and got the materials out of there showing crimes against humanity and weapons of mass destruction uh, specifically um, genocidal gain of function type of um, diseases and things that they were orchestrating to primarily target the um, groups the slavic groups they were genetically engineered to go specifically to slavic groups below the ground the biggest one that they found of course right away was Chernobyl. it's a good place to hide things they were using bio facilities they also have bunkers and things where they do uh throughout ukraine where they do selling i did a decode on this it's very uh, disturbing but they do selling of young people uh and give the women certain amount and then sell them to the, the people that abuse young ones all over europe and the rest of the world and then they also do um experimentation there so a russian general said with Chernobyl they're not leaving until they've rescued the last child so this is an ongoing uh, situation so that was a way to uh, cover what they're doing additionally in a lot of bio facilities dumb types the use nuclear radiation to enhance and create super soldiers that's a kind of a a common thing they do it's the top end are called the theta and then there's also deltas where they create super soldiers with extra abilities and also enhance them with implants of uh, nanotechnology as well as other technologies so that they can be linked together to do you know the foxtrot foxtrot kind of things where they go in as a group of five or six individuals that are linked together so they act like one single organism they communicate telepathically and they're controlled by a main handler outside outside the uh off site of the uh, area that's being having the ff done on it so this is a common thing that they do with many of the dumps throughout the world um the main place above the ground in ukraine were china that's why trump said china but it's he said china c-h-y apostrophe n-a is the facilities in ukraine that were used for this and pretty much the details of the rest are in the paper there okay uh, very interesting you you mentioned the, the super soldiers and the the radiation i mean we've seen that in uh kind of like fictional movies like of course uh the the, the hulk but is there kind of truth in that that uh, that they've found that gamma rays do enhance uh, the creation of these super soldiers and whatever genetic modifications are happening that gamma rays facilitate that? Yes, they, you know most movies people realize that some people don't. You know, I get attacked by people saying that it's a vivid imagination that thinks all movies are real in actuality. 
pretty much the case. It's controlled information and sometimes diffs information, but in this case, it's information. The Hulk, James Rink talks about this on his platform on Super Soldier Talk, where he was involved in a situation like this, where they use gamma rays and other nuclear radiations and other radiations we don't even know about to create the Hulk type super soldiers as well as others. Okay, well, thanks for clarifying that. That I agree. I think that uh, a lot of movies and TV series is just hiding the truth in plain sight. And actually, that's a that's a, a great way of of being able to hide the truth because you can always say, well, uh, you know, you're, you've got, as you said, a vivid imagination. You're you're just you're just assuming that this TV series, like the Hulk, is is real. But in fact, as you said, it, this is the ideal cover for hiding these kinds of programs. Now, one of the things that you discuss in your in your paper is the al alternative uh, one to four scenario where there was this belief by the cabal that uh, there would be some kind of catastrophic earth changes coming and they came and they came up with these uh, Wow, that was some big thunder <laughs> right above me. Uh, so, yeah, they came up with this uh, f plan or four alternatives. So you want to talk about alternative um, one, two, three, and four? Absolutely. And before I go there, I'd like to go back when you know people say they don't hide. It is the sickness. They have to show it beforehand. They believe it avoids the uh, karmic backlash. It doesn't. They believe it. And then additionally, they have shown that they do this. So during World War II at the Paris Air Show, the NAZIs actually showed their primary aircraft that they were going to use in the battle at the Paris Air Show. And of course, everybody's going, that can't be. They wouldn't put it at the air Paris Air Show. They put it in plain sight because people will go, well, that can't be. So there is a lot of precedence in doing that. So yes, alternative one through four. So alternative one through four are the deep state's idea to be able to uh, have complete dominion over the earth. It's a series of ways to continue to rule the earth and for them to survive any kind of calamity that could possibly befall them between natural disasters all the way up into and including the masses waking up and storming the castle, so to speak. So to speak. It's extremely difficult to storm a castle that's underground when you have these huge, huge uh, doors like Cheyenne Mountain or something like that, or even entrances that are hologrammed to look like dirt, like the side of a mountain or some old facility that's no longer used and it's welded shut. And then you have a lot of these facilities that go from big cities where you go into, you know, it's normal to see big trucks going to shopping malls and they go into a basement area and then there's a tunnel system or there's a, at first, a um, elevator system to lower them down. Like when I was uh, one time, I uh, went out to uh, DIA in Denver, Colorado. I drove out on Tower Boulevard next, took the uh, exit to go down to Tower and I sat on the side of the road and I witnessed big, huge semis going out on the big uh, dirt hill that's made like a ziggurat that they're dumping the dirt coming from the continued, continuing dig out. I mean, people don't pay attention to those kind of things. It's the in your plain sight kind of thing. And this huge semi came out to, uh, it wasn't carrying dirt. It you know didn't have the, the, the dump truck kind of thing. It had big trailers on it. And then it could not have turned around there. It's too narrow with all those trailers, so I'm really confused what's going on. And then I watched it, you know, sink down into, in other words, on an elevator, go down into the facility there. Then about half an hour later, the truck came back up without the trailers on it, just the, you know, the truck itself facing the other direction and drove off. So these are the kind of things that are, if you're paying attention and you take the time, like another time I went out on tower itself at midnight and I'm, put a tarp over myself if somebody came up behind me like the police and they put a tag on your vehicle, abandoned vehicle that needs to be removed within 48 hours. 
and I watched the runways, the frontier runways, which are the westernmost runways within that kind of a swastika-shaped runway pattern they have at DIA. And at about 3 a.m., just like an aircraft carrier, I saw the runway lower down and a shaft of light from around the, the, the platform that's lowering. Up. And then it came up with a, a large one of the Aurora-class ships and then if I had blinked, I would have missed what happened next. But the entire ship started to glow, went up on end, and it literally was like Star Trek, where the star stretched towards the ship, and then suddenly it stretched out, and then it disappeared in a streak up into the sky. It went into FTL or faster than light drive. So they've been doing these different alternatives and different things. I described them all in this paper and the reasons why they do them. The uh, primary, the dumps, is their original plan was to, in, on Earth, was to get, go underground and create, during the uh, last, she was never supposed to lose, Hillary, for during her term to create a nuclear war so that the Earth, all the peoples of Earth would be wiped out. They already have the slave groups and those th in the, the storage for the bodies that the Shakar and those other groups need to, you know, to feed on. So they were ready to nuke out the earth. They have the seeds and all of those to come out after the radiation has subsided to the point they feel it's good for them to go out. Of course, the Chikar and the Anunnaki enjoy a higher radiation atmospheric and planet surface anyway. So the plan was to cause a nuclear war. We can see a lot of still of that kind of thing going on with Ukraine and all the things and the Gaza and those things that they're saying edging us closer, ever closer, and we're closer than we ever have been, including the Cuban Missile Crisis, to exactly that. And this is the uh, part that still wants that. But unfortunately, now with the vast loss of the massive amount of, the, actually, the majority of their domes, they do not have that luxury to use alternative, uh, uh, this alternative of the underground facilities. I mean, as as I recall, it described three alternatives: uh, the going underground, the deep underground military bases, the moon, and then Mars. And this came out in in I think nineteen seventy six and or seventy seven, and it was very controversial. But I think, as you said, it was like hiding the truth in plain sight that this was a a, a revelation of what the what the deep state was planning to do. But you, you mentioned a fourth alternative. So what's the fourth alternative? So now there's actually a fifth. So, you know, you have the alternatives. One was, you know, to continue to keep them able to survive. They knew the Great Awakening was going to happen and that the human race would wake up, the human species would wake up and throw off the chains. And so in that, it would be due to the photon belt is they enter it, it would up the genetics and up the abilities and up the awareness of the human species. So they first tried to alter the er energy around the earth in the Van Allen belts and in the upper atmosphere. So what they did is simultaneously detonated nuclear devices uh, in the polar regions in the out where they wouldn't be witnessed. In other words, the outback, the Amazon, um, Marla Morgan talks about how the real people in her book, Message from Down Under, witnessed this and have it recorded of a nuclear device being detonated in the outback. Uh, there were ozone holes over all of these areas. They say it's due to, uh, back in the day, Freon and those things, and that we need to lessen our emissions, the people ourselves. We're contributing it. You know, it's destroying the ozone and all that. The problem with that narrative, like I stated, uh, previously in, in this paper is that um, if that were true, you would see the ozone holes over major population centers, like you know, the biggest ones, New York, Los Angeles, Tokyo, et cetera, where you have a large industrial output going, especially over Beijing and places like that now that have massive industrial activity, but you don't. You see an increase in the ozone because any electrical sparking device like engines and cars with spark plugs or 
a lot of your lights, like neon lights that have a starter, you have ozone being generated by that sparking. So vehicles and all of these industrial outputs creates ozone. And so now we see the ozone holes have mostly been filled in. The uh, Another alternative, of course, was the dumps. They also, as far as the energizing the Earth's atmosphere, once the, it just made ozone holes and didn't change the, the uh, field of the energy, they had the space shuttles dragging huge long wires behind them with the frequencies they wanted. That also didn't work. So they were focused on the dumps, both on Earth and then also to have an off-Earth alternative is another one where they go off-Earth, and that would be dumps connected to Mars and the Moon and other places now through portals and stargates. And then another alternative they are now doing is to have where they actually create alternative timelines and little pocket universes to be able to retreat into those or have alternative universes to interfere with this one so that they did like they did with Tataria. They can in certain groups and certain things that would get in the way of their, you know, new world order as uh, Hitler first wrote in his second book after me on Kampf and has been stated many times by both Bush Sr. and Bush Jr. and many other people, including Klaus Schwab, the WEF, about how Ukraine ended that. So I hope that fills in a little more. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned alternative timelines and pocket universes. I mean, I've, I've heard this said by a number of people associated with James Rink and Super Soldier Talk, and I'm not quite clear on, on exactly what this pocket universe is, where apparently, you know, there's a lot of different organizations, corporations that are located in these pocket universes, and somehow they come into our timeline. So, I mean, how real is that? It's very real. It's an outgrowth, actually, of FTL, faster than light. When you create a faster, it's simply just like they show in Star Trek, you create a warp field. So you're in your own little universe. That's why you can do sudden massive accelerations, like going to you know FTL, engaging it where you're going from the energy structure of the universe to faster than light. You would bring be nothing but putting on the back of the wall of the craft if you're in this universe you're actually creating a pocket universe in that warp field so ftl always does that so they learned how with also as an outgrowth of the philadelphia experiment to stabilize it so it, it stays separate from the other universes and then they can utilize and they've now learned how to label the frequency pattern so they can go to whatever specific pocket universe or universe they want to go and they've labeled them and categorized quite a few of them. Now, I, I watched The Man in the High Castle, uh, the, the Richard Dick short story that uh, was turned into a series on, on Amazon Prime and I think it ran for three seasons or four seasons and, and it described another timeline, another reality where the, the Nazis won the war and, and, and the United States was divided between, it was, you know, Japanese occupied the West and the, and the Nazis occupied the East. So is it, is, and, and of course, you know, you have all, all sorts of different corporations associated with that. Is, is that an example of this kind of like alternative timeline and pocket universe? Well, that is a situation, that's an alternative timeline and, and not actually a pocket universe created through technological means only. That's a uh, difference in the choices and patterns of how people choose to do an experience and what they choose to do, say, and act in all of the different actions intertwined. Also, Philadelphia Experiment, the first movie, there's a Philadelphia Experiment too, in which um, because of a bleed over, it caused the the Nazis to win World War II, but it was a different thing where the Nazis were running the West. So there's many different possibilities of the outgrowth of World War II, or for example, if you watch the series Sliders, they slide to a many, 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 many Earths, where, for example, the United States did not get freedom from England, and, you, and so they were a, um, and Benedict Arnold is actually a hero, he's not a traitor, and the, um, people like George Washington and the Founding Fathers are traitors. So there's many, many different uh, choices that people can make that then create 
a new timeline, a new resonant frequency of choice and pattern and behavior. And those actually do exist. Every choice a person in a group of individuals come together in a group choice pattern and creates a timeline. Every choice a person can do, it starts towards that. But you need a group of individuals to create a quantum and, uh, where there's enough quantum energy to create a complete and separate timeline. Interesting, interesting. Well, in the document you sent me, uh, there is, I mean, you, you say here, the there are at least 10,000 deep underground military bases and hundreds of thousands of miles of tunnels worldwide. So, I mean, that's an extraordinary number. I mean, I haven't seen it that high before. I mean, I, 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 re I read the I read the book by Richard Sorda, uh, you know, well over a decade ago, and he talked about 120 dumbs in the United States alone. But yet here you're saying there's over 500 known dumbs in the U.S. alone and 10,000 worldwide. I mean, that's a how did you come up with that number? Well, it first started with the work of Mark William Cooper, Phil Snyder, and James Caswell, and a few others, the research and what they revealed. And then personal experience as well and going to certain areas, also my military career, realizing as I got transferred all over the world, different, you know, I always wanted to go from get more broad experience than Navy actually promotes for you every two to three years to transfer to a different submarine. If you're in the submarine service or in the surface fleet, they want you to serve in both all the different fleets, the Atlantic fleet, the Pacific fleet, et cetera. So you transfer back and forth. And in that process, uh, especially, you know, submarines that would get decommissioned. I was on one that did that. I became aware of um, technologies and things that were under the bases. So under the Hawaiian Islands or under Norfolk or under, you know, the shipyards like Mare Island and um, under the big, huge, even civilian like LA or uh, Boston Harbor or any of these, but specifically the U.S. military bases worldwide and especially within the u.s so you have like holloman air force base where eisenhower had a meeting in 1952 well there's a vast facility under there and then all of like they keep going to germany to meet at a certain place at a certain base in germany and there's a massive underground facility that's why they're going there you have the wef you have eu and nato going there and when you constantly see high level people within the visual range of the people we know the puppets you know that we see the puppet masters running that always keep meeting at certain places there's a reason there's a place they can go to be safe it's like during a near pass of an asteroid where they were not 100 percent sure it would just be a near pass obama came to dia uh he flew out to denver and stayed at dia for a too long of a time just to be flying in going somewhere and under the he went out to the federal center which is connected to dia it's an underground facility it's the west wing of the white house so to speak for the deep state and that actually has a nuclear signature coming both from dia and from the federal center which is uh just east of kipling i think it is in Wadsworth, between Kipling and Wadsworth, and south of I-70 area, I think it is. And so that's a huge area, and they've converted that, and you have to have your, show your badge or your military ID and get in and be checked that you had permission and all this. So it's not just Cheyenne Mountain, but there's these facilities, like when they get an aircraft, a non-terrestrial air vehicle, or, you know, what is, they keep changing the name, I'll just use name we're all familiar with unidentified flying object like in uh, roswell they take it to certain bases all the time so the skunk works too they take their stuff when it's down accidentally to certain facilities they have like dugway proving ground or area 51 area 52 so there's lots and lots of these so as you go and do the research and follow the bases and follow where craft and where people meet it becomes more obvious and then you see little places out in the middle of nowhere where trucks will come up and then they just seem to not be there later on. You go by and then nothing came out. It becomes obvious or you see huge power lines way beyond what should be going into the ground, going into the ground. Or you see ventilation systems or you see cement blocks 
in the middle with a access cover that are in the middle of a, a cottonwood forest, for example, alongside the river. Uh, why would that be there out in the middle of nowhere? So you start connecting the dots. It's very important that uh, we acknowledge the research of uh, people who have I made those connections and begun to identify these uh, these dumbs all over the all over the world. As as you say, it's very helpful to kind of identify where they are. So you spend quite a bit of time uh, discussing the boring machines, the technology used to build these underground uh, bases, and you know, here the tunnel boring technologies. So you want to talk about the tunnel boring technologies okay so now what we see is they were using nuclear boring systems they would use as you could see here in the paper were directed energy what systems like what we see used have seen used in Haina. they use these uh, type of directed energy uh, devices to bore the tunnel systems they have them both on the horizontal types and on the vertical drop types. And the vertical drop types um, have where they get to the certain amount of time. It doesn't care what it's going through. It bores at the same rate, the speed of gravity. And then once it gets to the timing, they need that depth to be is based on timing. The device goes off, creates a large cavern that then they come in and do things to uh, neutralize whatever little radiation there is because they have technologies that has exact salting for uh, neutron compared to other materials to make the proper size cavern. And then the horizontal devices are boring the tunnels as, with the same technology to get there. Um, now they are even more advanced in the uh, horizontal tunnel drilling systems where they can actually use a kind of a portaling technology and they can portal the material into a uh, another location in space time so it's getting extremely bizarre and kind of like unbelievable in many ways even for me uh, you know it's like when i first started with how many tunnels and dumps there were and then i started doing more research it goes exponentially so here we have uh, another one of these uh, tunnel boring machines so i'll just go through the ones you have in your document gene and and at at any point if you wanted to like um, elaborate on what we're seeing here because these look like some pretty big machines and it's interesting that you know this is not something the mainstream media talks about but i mean this is a massive machine tunnel vision maximus eye of the fish 2009 wow that's that's a huge machine. I, I guess what they must use that for creating some huge tunnels. So this is, I don't know, do you want to talk about that one? Or this is Madrid? Yes, Spain. absolutely. So these big machines, um, now they don't have the mechanical boring heads as uh, what we were talking about. Um, this is 2009. Now we're talking 15 years later. If you watch the expansion of human technology and knowledge it grows exponentially we're now growing exponentially by the day it used to be you know between 19 i think it was 70 1950 and 1975 the human knowledge doubled and then 75 to 87 or 83 somewhere in there it doubled again so you can see it was decreasing and then now it's supposed to be doubling faster than every day so the technologies being used now are not this but they are this big they still bore these massive huge tunneling devices they can tunnel and bore but they don't have to have such a massive material delivery system or energy system behind them everything has gotten more and more technologically advanced to where they can uh, bore the big holes without so much of a machine behind the boring head, which is doing directed energy, or it's doing a portaling system. So yeah, just more examples of these uh, tunnel boring machines. So you know, clearly they they're building these huge tunnel complexes all over the world, and and while ten thousand tunnels. Uh, 10,000 dumbs sounds like a lot when you see how many of these machines are in existence and are being used all over the world it, it becomes feasible that yeah this is exactly how many they they have in operation so 
yeah, any any of these ones you want to elaborate on? I think they speak for themselves. And then, you know, additionally, if you look at some of the names of these companies, you can go look at the technologies they have. You can see it on the side of the machines here, also within the links. You can go look up the advancements they've made. And then you think of all the major powers and then even things like the EU and NATO and all of these things. And then the military industrial complex and you have, you know, Northrop Grumman, you have Martin uh, Marietta Lockheed, um, all of these big major industrial corporations and things that are all involved in this, that are doing their tunnel systems, their domes, their, you know, it becomes literally where now you realize the earth is pretty much a giant honeycomb and that the technologies have got so advanced, you know, that it just keeps on going. And I did want to point out on this um, one right here, the how deep does the rabbit hole go? I want to pay special mention to Dr. David Adair. Um, this is from Outer Limits Radio Show. Dr. David Adair had is very advanced technologically with all the information he put out, and I want to give him special notice for all he's done for the human species and, and the Alliance. Yes, he's definitely put out a lot of information on, on these advanced technologies. Now, when it comes to the Earth's honeycomb system, I mean, many researchers have said that this uh, th there's already a very extensive underground tunnel system that exists from antiquity. But what's happening is that uh, the cabal or the deep state or the military that are using these advanced boring machines that you know they they do a little bit of digging they come across one of these other tunnels and they kind of use it and repurpose it so yeah how, mu how much of the tunnel system all over the world is kind of like newly built built by us or us just kind of repurposing these older tunnels that go back thousands of years i would say we are currently from the you know say let's say the end of world war ii we're about 10 percent we've added 10% more than what existed before. So that's not a lot. So if you look at civilizations like Atlantis that were using the edge of the continents, the plates, and they had a way to put, you know, essentially maglev systems way back then on both sides. So on one side of one plate, like the, the Atlantic boundary, you would have one going north-south. On the other side, you would have on the European plate, that would be on, say, on the American's plate, of the Atlantic boundary, then at the mid-ocean rift. And then on the other side, you'd have it going the other direction. And, you know, people will say, well, you know, keep going with the heat and the structure and all this. They obviously, if you watch, you know, another movie for me that is just giving you information of what they can do is the movie The Core, where they go all to the way to the core. They have technologies that as heat and pressure goes up, it uses the heat and pressure to propel the machine, to make the technology and everything in it go. They actually convert it and they have all these advanced materials like Phil Snyder put out, you know, showing different materials when he went around and talked about these facilities, these bases, these space programs, and he actually showed advanced materials and, you know, the damage to himself while he was in a facility being lowered down into a entrance, a vertical entrance, and he got in a uh, firefight with non-terrestrial beings and he you know, lost two fingers and got scarred on his chest. So these are things, you know, these amazing people that gave their lives for this knowledge. We need to recognize that this is not somebody's imagination, that this is real and to recognize what the deep state has been doing with it. If you look at what they're doing now on above ground, multiply that exponentially and multiply military is always decades ahead in military industrial complex decades ahead of that of what is actually out to the mainstream people in the world so what we are now finding of what they've been doing and everything most people the average person that follows mainstream media will not believe it anymore it's literally like a science fiction show and fantasies that people are going because it's like, you know, the boards used to say the um, the uh, 17th letter of the alphabet boards. The most people cannot imagine it. It would literally cause them to have a uh, mental break. So 
the technologies and what is going on down there is so vast. There's a video on YouTube I watched where a guy was a uh, sniper and he watches people coming into areas like Area 51 Dugway Proving Ground that I talked about earlier. And he actually saw a huge explosion. He saw two reptilians and they suddenly disappeared just an instant before that. And then after the ground had settled, they were back. So they are able to move themselves briefly through time to avoid things. I mean, that's showing you the technology, these non-terrestrials that play the puppet strings for the terrestrial puppets that we see that are played from the top down to the ones where we see that are absolutely out in the mainstream media. And then you have levels upon levels. So it's just the same underground. You have levels upon levels of control and who's doing what, and who's using what, and pocket universe dumps and it's insane how big it is and how massive what's under the ground is. It is essentially something I don't think anyone fully knows what's down there. Maybe the inner earth beings do, but I don't know if anybody else does. Well, you know, you've already said that there's uh, approximately 10,000 dumbs that have been built world worldwide. And you said approximately 10% of the tunnel systems that exist have been built by us and that 90% are ancient. They pre-exist our modern Western civilization. So that takes me to this book called Inside the Earth, authored by Radu Cinema. And, and he described a, an extensive uh, tunnel system that's very ancient, that spans the earth, the honeycomb earth, going through different density levels and all of that. And, and he described these different uh, tunnels uh, as being linked by portals. So, yeah, what's your take on this idea of, of the tunnel systems and the, the portals that are entrances to these tunnels and the different civilizations uh, inside the Earth? Uh, the more advanced civilizations do it that way, where it's portal length. So you go from, for example, he's talking about the Chegg Mountain in Romania complex that links by a portal system straight to the Giza system. It's in the Giza Plateau, the pyramids and all that, and pretty much the entire Giza Plateau tunnel system, as well as some huge, very huge, large dumps. And uh, literally, it's, I've heard, I haven't been able to verify it, that there's a craft one mile in diameter underneath the Giza Plateau that can literally phase shift and come out from under there. So that's some kind of very advanced technology. Then under the... Uh, Nazca lines in Peru, there's vast tunnels that follow the lines. So, and then they found blink technology, uh, non-terrestrial craft in those facilities to those tunnels that have dumps from another ancient civilization. If you look at the work of Sheffel in under Los Angeles, where he developed a device, he could find things. He found, you know, gold plates and all kinds of things, and he called it a reptilian city underneath Los Angeles. So there's another old, old ancient system under there from the beings that that's likely Chakar we're talking about. Then you go to the Grand Canyon. I have decodes like that on my uh, website on Deep Dives. And you they've discovered, you know, several different people starting in 1917. And there it was in the uh, Arizona newspapers how they discovered a tongue system that was built by the uh, Egyptians coming up the Colorado River and putting facilities in 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 the grand canyon itself so these systems every major civilization that has ever been on earth uh, even before it was earth and it was you know something else has put these tunnels in these dumps then they go all the way down some of them go all the way down to the inner earth you know and i've gone into uh, aerial post finally somebody else besides me is saying that the earth is hollow and has an advanced civilization inside so i done a decode on that as well and many many people have you know gone from example through the caverns and caves natural ones such as mammoth caves in the uh, eastern part of the u.s upper eastern part of the u.s the ghost the inner and then there's other detonations of nuclear devices that have in the case of the area of russia and other areas that have gone all the way to the center of the earth and other things so then of course i wouldn't 
put it past them or say that it was absolutely impossible for the inner earth beings with advanced technology to have their own systems connecting to the surface to come up and monitor us and help us every time we blow ourselves to smithereens up here or destroy ourselves to help rebuild the surface civilization to where they can start going on their own and surviving on their own yeah that's yep. a very good question thank you sorry go ahead yeah, yeah, no, I was saying, yeah, I totally agree with you there. That, that's that my information from different sources. Uh, yeah, it's the same conclusion that the inner earth beings just observe and they kind of intervene to help us at the at the final moment if, you know, if we're going to go into crisis or catastrophe. So that, that kind of brings up this uh, huge spacecraft that you said uh, you spoke about under the Giza pyramid or the complex there, that it's a mile in diameter. Uh, I I have heard of craft under the Giza pyramid, but one that big would suggest that this is some kind of space arc. So, where did you hear that? You know, what? How credible is that particular information? Yeah, I haven't been able to verify the credibility of it. Um, it's just one source, but you know, we have a lot of information about a craft that big that left Antarctica and came up, uh, detected by uh, wave height and as well as earthquake systems going up towards the coast, the west coast of Africa, and then suddenly just gone and showing exceedingly high wave heights that should have caused a tsunami in that part of Africa, but nothing ever happened. And you know, people are saying different things from what it was, but my understanding was there were originally three crafts underneath the ice, probably similar to a space, space or type of craft by the pre-atomized civilization when they left the destruction of Tiamat in that area and they came to you know what we call Earth and then they went to Antarctica which was ice free and then later it became covered with ice as it uh, the Earth's climate and it, the location of Antarctica uh, which is composed of two pieces. One part used to be Atlantis, the other part used to be, the major part used to be Lemuria attached to and Australia, which sat up in the Pacific Basin. If you look at the work uh, that I did on the expanding Earth, I showed maps by some people that are extremely uh, knowledgeable and did massive research in the early 1900s and 1800s on the expanding Earth. They just didn't know the mechanisms for it to be able to do that, which we now know. So all of this goes back to more tunnel systems, more dumps, more facilities, movements of things to which then needs reconstruction of some and then updating and then repurposing. Now, there's a book that you cite here that is a very important book for anyone wanting to study the uh, deep underground military bases. This is uh, Richard Sorter's book. Uh, and and that was the first one I read that, well, actually, no, I, I first came across uh, the work of Phil Schneider where he talked about the deep uh, deep underground bases and, and, and Dulce and so I came across that information. And then I was very impressed when I came across Richard Sorter's work that corroborated that uh, yeah, at the time when he wrote this book he found evidence of, 120 uh, deep underground military bases. And so, yeah, you want to talk about, uh, you want to speak to this book? Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Saul. So, yeah, his work is just groundbreaking and pivotal. You know, Phil Snyder and especially Dr. Sauter. And, you know, I use a lot of the information in there. So I wanted to pay notice and actually put the cover of the book and recommend this to people because it is talking not just about the domes, but you know, the technologies, as you can see, UFO-like technology, it's very important to understand this and to see that when you have this amount of material coming out, and it's not just one voice in the wind, you start to have to go by the preponderance of the evidence and then go out and do your own research and look what, if you travel a lot, it becomes even more obvious. If you can drive near these areas, I wouldn't recommend going to the areas, but near them, you can witness things. A lot of them are along major freeways and highways and even back state highways and those things. So it is easy to um, gather your own little kind of information and back up these materials like Phil Snyder's material and Martin Cooper's material and um, Dr. Sauter's. 
Now you talk uh, next in this uh, document, you talk about the nuclear submarines. Uh, you've already kind of mentioned that, and, and we saw some of the boring machines that ha that have these nuclear. Uh, I guess they vitrify the rock as they go through uh, using some kind of nuclear technology. And anything you want to add to that? I mean, what, these nuclear subterranean subterranes, how they operate. Yeah, they actually now, um, as they start the, uh, they seal it in behind so that it's creating the system that's glass lined, you know, essentially what we call something like obsidian. And then once they get it done, they, if it's going to be for a magla, they would seal it up and they can vacuum it out. Taking systems in and it doesn't have to, as it gets up to speed, and goes in, if it goes into a warp pocket, then it doesn't worry about it. But if it's going up to a high speed it, in a vacuum, it doesn't have to fight wind resistance or air resistance, so to speak. Well, it's worth pointing out uh, this study, uh, and you know, this is credit to you, Gene, for kind of digging up this kind of historical documentation. So this was a, a 1973 study. We're talking 50 years ago. Uh, talking about the systems and cost analysis for a nuclear subterranean tunneling machine, a preliminary study. So this is public information. 50 years ago, they're talking about these things. So we can be pretty certain that they were put into operation in classified programs uh, at that time. So it's great that you were able to dig up that particular document. Uh, anything yeah, you want to say about that document before we move on? Yes. The uh, Look at where it's being out of Los Alamos. Well, everybody knows the nuclear connections to Los Alamos. So if that tells me that this has been done 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago. So where have they gone since then? So if you look at places that are doing directed energy technology, dark and stuff, and where are those? That's, you can look for papers that way. You can look for a DARPA study, for example, on boring systems and technologies and mag gloves and all of these different ways to research. So just pointing out, you know, this is one way I did it. There's other ways you can pull up information. Thank you, Dr. Sol. Right. Well, very important uh, that we acknowledge uh, that th this kind of advanced technology has been around for, for, for many decades. So here you, you come up with a list of uh, patents on boring machines. And, and we can see the subterrain patent uh, from 1975. And just a, uh, you have here a long list of patents. So this, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know how you dug this up, uh, Gene, but obviously a lot of work to compile this extensive list of patents. So I don't know, uh, uh, any kind of particular research was this, did this come from, did you use the work of Richard Sorter and build on that to come up with this list of patents for all of the tunnel boring machines? Now I went to the US Patent Office and put in like, you know, you do in any search engine, you can search and say boring devices, underground boring devices, underground technologies, maglev, you know, put in your different terms you want to find in patents on and you can pull them up. It's a very easy place to get verified technologies that are already developed and being used. And you can see the companies, you can see what they're for, you can see the patent numbers, the dates, the years, the times. It just tells you everything. And then a little blurb about what it is. And as I look at the blurbs I'm getting, you know, they have to be powered by something, nuclear energy, nuclear power stations, nuclear energy installation. You just put these in and you get these. And I just copied it into this, what you see in this document. And you know, I highlight some of the things to me that really stand out because you have low energy nuclear reactions. You have ones that are portable that can be easily deassembled and reassembled. That speaks a lot about what they're doing and what they're using and how come and what they're doing down there. It tells you where the energy and the technologies are, what they're using, what their capacities are, portability, their use it, uh, you know, underground, new underground nuclear power plant. That that just tells you precisely safety considerations for that. So, you know, tower for deep underground reactor. So it's it's deep underground, and they you can look up, for example, what is near underground, medium, deep, etc. You can look up the terms that they use and get more information as you go. 
And it's just a really good way to do research. It's the U.S. Patent Office, you'd be amazed. People would be amazed if they go in there and they want to say um, zero point energy and do a search and see what you get. Just ways of a search engine that people don't realize is off there, the U.S. Patent Office. Well, yeah, this uh, list of patents and their applications in terms of uh, these uh, nuclear uh, subterranes and the creating tunnel systems and putting nuclear facilities in there going all the way back to the 1970s. That's very, very impressive. So, again, this is all in uh, Gene Decode's uh, document that you can get from his website so i think uh yeah this pretty much well just goes on and on westinghouse electric light company terra power wow uh, a, a modularized space nuclear reactor power generation unit wow that's interesting one to highlight anything it looks like it's a japanese company and then you know one of them you passed by was a scalar wave which means a standing wave so you're talking Tesla technology with standing waves and, and extremely advanced stuff not let out to the public yet. And, you know, again, you're, they have low energy nuclear reactors, for example, they have, like you see there, standing wave nuclear fission reactor. And there's other ones too, where you, you see, uh, I didn't highlight, but I recommend people read through because there's things that are even more advanced than standing wave technology in this if you know what you're reading when you look at it you you go hmm directed wave you know you're looking at things you want to keep your eyes and your mind open to understand and then do your research if you don't understand the term there's you know many many wonderful search engines out there that aren't mainstream you know uh, so bad that you can't really find anything on them this is one of them uh, and then you can look up the terms and things like that on other ones. Well, you know, here we have just, I mean, indisputable evidence that uh, these uh, nuclear subterranes and boring machines and building underground reactors in these uh, deep underground military bases. You know, and obviously if you have a deep underground military base that is built for housing 10,000 people. Well, you're not going to be able to provide a power source for that using coal, using conventional sources, because that would be you know, something very obvious. But here you've got all these underground nuclear power generating uh, patents and facilities, and this is exactly how you would power a underground, a deep, a dumb that houses 10,000 people or more, just as a nuclear power plant uh, can power a aircraft carrier for what is it 20 25 years so this is how you power the dumbs yes and they also built underground under continent submarine systems for the u.s submarines to be able to go from the oceans of the world underneath the continent and be able to hook to the facilities themselves and power them so for example when i was in the station in pearl harbor on one of my tours there the island of Oahu lost its power and they had to have some huge power source to reboot the city and the power system, power plants for the city. And they had something, you know, you like jumpstart your car, you gotta have something. So they had the New York City bring its nuclear reactors, New York City being fast attack nuclear submarine, show you the power level that, that a submarine can generate, a US Navy nuclear submarine. They brought their reactors online and then reversed the shore power. So they're feeding the shore and they powered the entire island and jump started the, the energy systems for the island of Oahu. So you can see that can obviously a US sub Navy or any country's nuclear submarine could drive a dumb with not any difficulty at all. Well, yeah, there you go. That's a great example. So we know how the dumbs are built. We know um, that their, their power sources, a little bit of what's going on in them. Uh, here is some information about their locations and well, how you are, how they're connected using these magnetic levitating trains or maglevs. So you want to tell us about the maglevs? Yes, so uh, the... Um that again, and you know, same with the patents. Look at the years and 
contemplate how far the technology has gone, like the last one you saw there, argon uh, power, low energy reaction. Look up what that means. Here you're looking up maglev, so that means magnetic levitation system. And so this is, again, we know the alternative was under Project Mark Rand, and here's the Rand Corporation talking about in 1972, uh, you know, essentially we're August now, so you're talking, this is 52 years ago if I'm doing my math right, that's a long time ago. And they're talking about they could do this, which means if they say, it's like in Ukraine, they say they're going to send F-60s. That means they're already there. Now they're saying they're there. Well, they've been there a long time. So this is the same thing. They've been here a long time. They said they could do this. That means within a year or two, they did do this. And you can see the speeds in 1972 that they were talking about they could do then. Obviously, it would be faster now. So you were talking from L.A. or to New York in 21 minute transit time. And this is what I've been telling people is you see people like, let's go back in the day, Obama, and he gets on a plane in DC or say in Chicago, and he shows up in Kiev or let's say Moscow. Look at the timing. And often you'll find out that it can't be regular aircraft, that he is showing up big leaders of the world, even the puppets of the world, are being in places too close together in time. So they're using these facilities, these maglevs, to go, as I said, to go under the oceans of the world, and they have, they're way faster now than this, and they have these that interconnect all the major cities and everything, but this is a really good uh, uh, entry into understanding it. And I think it's very important to point out, you know, a lot of people are critical of the United States uh, railway system and say, well, it's so dilapidated. I mean, why don't they have something as advanced as the bullet trains of Japan, France, China? You know, the, and these bullet trains can go like 300 miles an hour and people kind of like look at that. But here you have trains, a magnetic levs, a, a maglev system underground that was built 50 years ago connecting all of these major centers under the United States, and they can go as fast as 14,000 miles an hour uh, and making the the distance between Los Angeles and New York 21 minutes. And, of course, all of this is secret. It's all classified. And so we're made to think that we're behind Japan and Europe and China with their bullet trains, but in fact, we you know we're way ahead, but only in the classified world. Exactly, and you know it's the same thing as you have to understand how the deep state look at us, the military industrial complex, all of that. Why are they going to fix up the stuff that the slaves use? People don't realize you've been slaves for generations, way thousands of years. They look at us as useless eaters. There's terms like goyim that literally express their point of view. So why are they going to fix up what you're using if you die in a train wreck or something? Do you really think they care? And they purposely cause them, like we see with the, the uh, contaminated compounds being released in different places in the U.S. They use them for that exact purpose, to create the FFs and cause problems and kill people. And then that controls the narrative for them. So they don't want these systems updated. They don't want this information for the masses. This is for their use only. And then you go into the terror drives, which are even you know, portal systems and all of these things. Then you, even within the upper groups of the deep state, only certain ones at the very upper, upper levels get to use those. And then you go, well, they think they're upper, upper. What are the ones above them using? So you get into the levels and understanding of this as you follow it. It goes down uh, rabbit holes that get so deep and so advanced. Sometimes you think it's just, it can't be. But then you find these articles like this that go 50 years old and you go, well, it must be. And then you see and follow information and trails. And sometimes from one thing that has nothing to do with this, it leads straight into it or this leads straight into something else about, you know, the uh, assassination attempt on so-and-so or this and this or this person, the color regime revolution here or this. And it ties to these things. 
everything winds up being tied together. Thank you, Dr. Sol. Well, you know, here we have some more of the images. I guess this is form uh, using that kind of like a nuclear vitrification process uh, for the uh, for the subterranes. Um, you know, building that kind of the glassy wall structure. I guess this is from the Dulce underground base. Anything you want to? I mean, the Dulce underground ba uh, base. That's. I think we talked a little bit about that in our last interview. Uh, but yeah, this looks like one of the tunnels uh, built by the subterranes. Exactly. And then, you know, this would be a maglev system, and they would uh, use this from Dulce to interconnect to Dogway Proving Ground to connect to Area 51, Area 52, uh, the S4, S6, everything. It all would be interconnected through these vast systems. Okay, so here's some more facilities, but uh, this was something that I thought was worth pointing out because, you know, people might be skeptical and say, well, come on. I mean, you know, maglev systems that can crisscross the country in like 20 minutes. Well, here you have this LA Times article from June 11, 1972. LA to New York in half an hour, 10,000 mile per hour tunnel train plan developed. I mean, it's right there. It's, it, I mean, like you said, I mean, the, the, the slaves get to use uh, this kind of like dilapidated railway system, but the elite or the predator class, they get to use these underground maglevs that can go 10,000 miles an hour. And there you have it, you know, LA Times, 1972. It's right in front of your face. Yeah, and people need, you know, I saw a video the, uh, yesterday where we need to pay attention to what the deep state is saying. They'll put it out and then they'll act like it's not real or it hasn't yet happened. But the words in the headlines say it has happened. Train, tunnel train plan developed. So the plan is developed. Is the device and everything going with the plan? If you have a plan that you're paying a lot to develop, it's not going to be dead ended. You have a limitless amount of money to go into this, the World Banks and then the other you know, banking through the Green New Deal and all of that, the massive trillions that are funneled into these dark projects, they have an unlimited, they had an unlimited, they don't now, but they did have an unlimited budget to develop this. They're not going to not develop it, let it sit and just not develop it when it's to their advantage to do so, extreme advantage. Yeah, I just want to kind of like read out this uh, sentence here in this LA Times article because, I mean, it's, it's right there. The quote, the essence of the idea is to dig a tunnel more or less along the present routes of U.S. Highway 66 and 30. So underneath U.S. Highway 66 where people crisscross in their cars and take what, what is it, a week to travel from the east coast to the west coast, the tunnel would contain several large tubes for east-west travel of trains that float on magnetic fields moving at top speeds of 10,000 miles an hour. Passengers would face forward would face forward during acceleration, backward during de deceleration. So, yeah, I mean, it's right there in your face. We, the slaves, we get to drive our cars, taking days or a week to go from crisscrossing east and west, but underneath us, the predator class, the elites, they travel at 10,000 miles an hour on these uh, maglev trains. Mm -hmm. And you have these projects like in California where they're digging underground systems that said, for the masses and that said it didn't billions of dollars into it oh it's not going to work or we can't afford it anymore that means they finished it and you don't get to use it and you're looking at highway 66 and 30 but you have massive highway networks right you know from going uh from the up from south to north 10 20 you know 40 i 40 i 70 uh, and these the reason they put them under the big, huge highways is because the vibrations won't be picked up. And then they can take a small offshoot roads with their big trucks, go underground, use the trucking systems underneath. They have underground highways for the truckers, too. There's many videos of truckers now on YouTube and other places where they go in in Kansas City and they come out, for example, in Mount Chasta. So... These are now out there, and there's all this information. It's readily available. It's to the point where the preponderance of evidence, you can't just say this is a fake out, an illusion, or somebody's imagination. There's too much out there. Yeah, no, this is this is great research that you've put together, Gene. And, uh, yeah, I mean, here we, here we have just another 
example of this that underneath these major highways uh, you have these uh, massive tunnels with these maglev trains traveling 10,000 miles an hour and above ground you know we're traveling what is it 70 miles an hour 80 miles an hour if you if you break the limit and go at 90 you'll get pulled over by a cop and say yeah you're breaking the limit no one's allowed to go that fast and they're going 10,000 miles an hour underneath you yeah it is it, it does make you have to laugh at how insane we've been trained to uh be you know where we sit there and get pulled over for speeding at 90 and underneath you they're going 10,000 miles an hour below you it's like this world is in the movie we're living in it's just the worst sarcastic uh movie we've ever seen you know? yeah here's here's another one i guess uh, uh another story uh, um, again, that's LA the same one that's a screen capture okay that's the same one okay all right so here we have uh, okay, a corridor in a historical mine in, in Poland. Here's another deep underground military base um, in uh, Mimbriz. I, I don't know if that's uh, another – is that Poland or something? Uh, I would have to go look at my research. I don't have that at my fingertips. It just but I'm just showing it that it is all over the world. Right, of course, underground, Musk, Sweden. Okay, so here's a very interesting map. So this is the map of the major underground tunnel entrances worldwide and in the USA. So, yeah, tell us about, about this particular map. I mean, how did you come up with this map? Uh, just putting in underground, and then this came up on a search, and you can see the copyright date here, Leading Edge Research Group, 1996. So this is, you know, and you can see I, I give all the credits due by, you know, because it is a copyrighted item. It's out on the surface area and everything else, uh, not behind a paywall. So you put the proper links so people that got this out are given their credit where credit's due. And look at the amount of facilities just on this little map. It shows a lot of what we've been talking about. You see Haynes Junction up there in Alaska. You know, of Canada, that's obvious. And then you see the one up near Nome and that's along the uh, pipeline. What do you think's under the pipeline? Of course, they're gonna be doing something under the pipeline. You've got things down in the, like I said, along the continental rifts of the Atlantic Ocean. You've got one in New Zealand and then it goes down the continental rift or in the Azores or uh, you've got some in some pretty odd places that you wouldn't think and then we talked about the massive complex under south america and you can see so or south africa i'm sorry south america as well i've talked about those but south africa you can see them as well and those are the major complexes that we know of but there's massive massive complexes underneath this as well and then if you go to the uh, you know i know 10 kilometers is a default setting however you can do a search based on history for 10 kilometer and it starts going up massively in the uh, 40s and then you don't see in certain areas like Oklahoma for example anything until Trump got in in you know when he got in suddenly see the same areas that never experienced earthquakes and a plethora of earthquakes around certain areas that Phil Snyder Cooper uh, and other people have talked about dumps being there, suddenly there's earthquake activity there again. In other words, cleaning out the dumps. I know it's a default setting, but you look at the profile of the earthquake also. You don't just say there's an earthquake. Is it got, is it natural? Does it have both the P waves and the S waves? Or does it only have the S waves? And you don't, it's deep, but you only show the, the surface shearing wave. That's not natural. You have an explosion going off at depth that depth and if you translate 10 kilometers it just happens to come up to thirty-three thousand feet they love their symbols and it's just too coincident coincident for me to believe that it's a coincidence okay so here's another another map of the extensive tunnel system in the u.s and uh, again crisscrossing east west north south and you have maglevs traveling at ten thousand miles an hour in i guess major portions of those routes quite amazing yeah and then you can see you know when you look at these maps you want to look for the straight shot 
dumps. That tells you that there's major dumps at each end. So you can see one going from the right side of the Great Lakes straight across underneath the extension of Michigan and straight across the Great Lakes and coming without any bend whatsoever. That tell you that tells you that that system is way advanced and way fast. You're talking something that is major dumps at each end, but they want to get back and forth really quick. You can see something like that up in Canada, and you can see you know different places like in uh, Ukraine. You can see one that goes from Odessa to Kiev. It's a straight shot. So you're talking something that they want to get people and materials quickly from point A to point B, and it really elucidates the wars we see and what's going on in different places. Okay, so I guess here's another layout showing some of the major routes in the United States and some of the symbolism, because here you have uh, some incredible symbolism that are, this is not accidental, this is by design, that the, the grid or the layout of these dumbs and the networks connecting them are somehow connected to these different constellations. You want to speak to that, Gene? Absolutely. They love symbols and they love to use the energies as they line up over Earth, like we see with the building of the pyramids all over the place. Like along the Nile, of course, the Giza system itself is really down on the constellation of Belt of Orion. But if you look at the pyramids all the way down the Nile, they're on the constellation Leo. And underneath those are obviously facilities. The same thing if you look at Europe, you see Gemini and you see Libra. If you look at Africa, you're going to see different constellations in different continents and different areas because they're using the energies of those areas and also things called apens to help use the energy for their facilities and for the uh, high-end technologies that go into essentially black magic where you're doing things that cross into the occult. And that's why they're laying it out in these symbol systems. So you can see here how the maglevs and the, the domes are laid out on constellations. And then even within, say, California, I've got a map where you can see where it's a pentagram, and that would be occult usage. Well, that's incredible information, uh, Gene, that you have in this document. So, you know, we do have some more questions that goes into what's happening in these uh, dumbs. Uh, that concerns uh, some very sensitive topics that we really can't discuss on YouTube. Uh, but we're going to have to come back and, and resume because this deserves uh, a, quite a bit of attention. So uh, anything you, you want to add to what we've discussed or what you're working on now uh, and what we can look forward to uh, next time we come back? Yes, thank you, Dr. Salas. I mentioned the occult with the... Uh pentagram system in California. We can go into that because it gets disturbing and YouTube won't allow it to stay up anyway. And then uh, we can do more. And I'm working on a deep intro to go and that'll also be um, probably, uh, I'm debating whether to put it on deep dives or surface area in my room. And uh, we'll see based on what's in it, just like what we're talking about now, I've got to be sensitive to the uh, paywalls and uh, platforms and things that don't allow certain things to be there. So, um, yes, um, I'll be also in the future doing de decos into the locations of all the dumps and what they are doing with them now, because it's changed the Alliance has got the majority of the dumps worldwide. The tunnel systems is what they're mostly working on now because they're so vast and so many, and then ancient systems they're finding. So I'll be going into those in the future, both on Deep Dice and on my Rumble and Surface Area on my you know, gdeco.org and with you, Dr. Saul. So thank you for having me again and look forward to hopefully doing this again soon. We will, and I uh, just really appreciate the extensive uh, work and research you've done into assembling all of this data into a one single document that people can use to dive deep into. So I encourage people to go over there to genedecode.org, uh, join up, go into the deep dives to kind of like uh, uh, get access to a lot more than uh, what's, what's been covered. So thank you, Gene, and I look forward to uh, resuming this discussion in our next interview. Thank you, doctors. We look forward to it. Thank you, everyone, and God bless. You have been listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala. 
Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books, webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Sala. Visit exopoliticstoday.com. Thank you.